Welcome to the DAW setup video for Rhythmizer Ultra. Before skipping to your DAW, the first thing to know that's common to most DAWs is that Rhythmizer behaves like a MIDI effect, but is loaded more like a second instrument. Here's why. All DAWs are different, and most of them have their native MIDI effects, which can be added to the same channel as a synth. But many don't let you add third-party MIDI effects, like Rhythmizer, to this list of effects. So, with many of the DAWs, we set up Rhythmizer on one channel, then route its MIDI output to your synth or sampler on a second channel. Right, now let's get set up. Let's get started with Ableton Live, and I'm actually going to go on to show you how to make a preset out of this, so you don't need to do this routing more than once. Here I've got my synth channel, which has got operator on it. Now let's load up a rhythmizer in the first channel. Great, so now we need to connect the two. So I'm going to come to my MIDI routing. I'll select rhythmizer in the top box. In the bottom box, I'm going to select rhythmizer ultra. That's crucial. And just hit monitor in to finish the job. All connected. Now we need to create some MIDI for rhythmizer. Let's say our track's in C. I'll just write the note C, hit legato to extend that note to the end of the clip, and we're rocking. Check out this power hack. I'm going to select both of these channels, hit Control or Command G to group them. I'm going to rename my group something like Ultra Group. Then I'm going to drag this into my user library. And you can see I've already got one with that name. And I've categorized it so that it's in my favorites folder. Now we can load this whole configuration with just one click. We've got Rhythmizer, a synth, and some MIDI, all rooted, all ready to go. And there's one other great little tool for live users. First, I've updated my operator with this kind of bell sound. In your downloads, you should see this Ultra Mapper Max for Live instrument. Go ahead and drop it onto your synth channel. Now let's head back over to Rhythmizer. Down here in my CC presets, I'm going to select Ultra Map. And on each slot, I'm going to right click and assign the four Ultra Map CC outputs. Then I'll get a little bit of movement going with my first groove knob. And you can see that this is now sending out CC data. And sure enough, Ultra Mapper is receiving it on those channels. You can now convert that CC data to map any control in live on a synth, or on a channel. Any routing which you can dream up can now be mapped with Rhythmizer Ultra and Ableton Live 11. Okay, let's get set up in Cubase. I'm using 8.5 today. Okay, so I've got my synth channel already set up and I want Rhythmizer to send some MIDI. So I'm going to create another instrument track with Rhythmizer Ultra loaded on it. Now let's get them speaking to each other. So down here on my synth channel, under MIDI inputs, I'm going to select that rhythmizer. And do make sure that synth track is armed. Now let's draw a MIDI note, which rhythmizer will process. Let's say our track's in C. I'm going to drag out a long note in C. And that's it, we're up and running. And we can come over here and load up a preset from rhythmizer. And we can get a bit of modulation happening. A bit of random velocity and gating. But there's one thing before you go. To optimize stability in Cubase, we recommend coming to your plugin manager, finding Rhythmizer Ultra. You can just do a search for this. 
and make sure that the ASIO guard is inactive. Now you should be in for a smooth ride. Rhythmizer setup is a joy in logic. Here I've got my serum channel. I'm going to come to my MIDI inserts, refined with Mazda Ultra under Futurephonic, and that's it. They are now connected. So next, we need to draw in a MIDI loop. This is the MIDI that with Mazda will process. So we'll draw out a region, come in here and draw a long note. Let's say C. Hit play, and rock and roll. Here we are in Reaper, and I've got my long MIDI note drawn out. This is a long extended note. Now we just need to add Rhythmizer Ultra and drop it in the chain. So I'll select it, and then I'm just going to reorder it so it's before Serum. Hit play, and that's it. Here we are in FL Studio. And there are two distinct methods for connecting with Miser. We'll show you the first method, but I would actually recommend the second method using Patcher, as it's just more intuitive, quick to set up, and crucially, when it's finished, you can just save a preset and load it instantly, time after time. Let's get started with FL Studio. I'm going to start by adding an instrument track with with Miser Ultra on it. Let's come up here into the settings. Click the little gear icon, and we can select, say, output port number two. Let's come over to the processing tab, and I'm just going to click this one output under connections. And this is important. Come over here to troubleshooting and select use fixed size buffers. This is essential to good operation in FL Studio. So just hit yes. And let's load up a synth and we'll go for serum. And we just need to connect it. So I'll come up here to my settings. Now we just need to connect that input port. So I'll do channel two. And we just need to write in a MIDI note, which Rhythmizer is going to process. So I'll come here to my Rhythmizer track, draw out a nice long note, and we're rocking. So here is the more recommended patcher method in FL Studio. Let's set up an instrument track. We'll add patcher. And this is a great little environment for rooting MIDI. So we just need to load up our Rhythmizer Ultra. I'm going to disconnect all outputs. Now let's add a synth. Let's try just FL keys for instance. Now it's just a case of routing them all together. So I'll click on the input for FL keys and disconnect all there. And then you guessed it, we just got to make that final connection. Now let's take a look at the MIDI ports. I'm going to come over to Rhythmizer. Up here in the settings, I'm going to select, say, output port number two. Over in the processing, I'm going to click one output. And over here in troubleshooting, I'm going to select Use Fixed Size Buffers, hit Yes. In our testing, this has brought about the most stable FL Studio with Miser experience. Now let's get some notes going. I'll click into our piano roll and draw out a long note. Let's say C3 if our track's in C. And that's it, they're connected. Don't forget, you can save this as a patch or preset and load it next time so you don't have to do any routing. Okay, let's get rocking with Studio One. First, I'm going to add an instrument track, call it Rhythmizer Ultra. I'm going to add another instrument track. This one I'm going to title Synth. Let's come over here to our plugins. I'm going to grab Rhythmizer Ultra and drag it over. Now let's drag Serum onto our Synth channel. Now it's just a matter of getting the two connected. 
So I'll go down to the MIDI inputs on our synth channel and just connect with Muzzer Ultra. And now I need to create some MIDI for with Muzzer to process. I'll draw C3, say if our track was in C. Hit the monitor button, and that's it, you're good to go. Great news for Bitwig users. The Ultra 1.1 update finally brings pitch bending to Bitwig. Therefore, bend mode is now available. Let's head over to our instrument track. And instead of adding the yellow VST3 version, let's add the blue note effects version of Withmiser. We'll go ahead and add our synth. Now we need to feed a sustained note into Rhythmizer. Remember, Rhythmizer generates random notes based on the MIDI which you sent into it. That's why we're drawing out this long note. Now we're all set up and ready to rock. Thanks for watching the DAW installation video. We have covered most of the major DAWs, and even if you don't see your DAW listed here, if it does support Rhythmizer, it's always just a case of routing the MIDI from Rhythmizer to your synth or sampler. We would like to make this Pro Tools friendly as well at some point, we just haven't had many requests for it yet. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at futurephonic.co.uk and I really hope you enjoy the next videos in the video series, where we're not just looking at how Rhythmizer works, but we're also going to have a lot of fun with it.